In this example, we're given a standard maximization problem, asked to write the objective function and the constraints. Once we do this, we'll introduce slack variables to convert the constraints to equations, and then we'll set up the initial simplex tableau. We won't be solving this, we'll just be setting it up. So going back to our problem, a manufacturer of bicycles builds racing, touring, and mountain models. The bicycles are made of both aluminum and steel. The company has available 9,793 units of steel and 7,430 units of aluminum. The racing, touring, and mountain models need 16, 13, and 18 units of steel and 15, 9, and 14 units of aluminum, respectively. So this is telling us that each racing model requires 16 units of steel and 15 units of aluminum. Each touring model requires 13 units of steel and 9 units of aluminum. And each mountain model requires 18 units of steel and 14 units of aluminum. The company makes a profit of $22 per racing bike, $38 per touring bike, and $24 per mountain bike. Assume that the company wants to maximize their profit. We're also told to let X denote the number of racing bikes, Y the number of touring bikes, and Z the number of mountain bikes. So the objective function will be our profit function. So let's let P be equal to, again because X represents the number of racing bikes, and each racing bike generates $22 in profit, we'd have P equals 22X plus each Y or touring bike generates $38 in profit, so plus 38Y plus each mountain bike generates $24 in profit. The number of mountain bikes is Z, so plus 24Z. So this is the profit function or the objective function. And now for our constraints, these deal with the amount of steel and aluminum available. Because each X or racing bike requires 16 units of steel, and each Y or touring bike requires 13 units of steel, and each Z or mountain bike requires 18 units of steel, and there's only 9,793 units of steel available, our first constraint would be 16x plus 13y plus 18z must be less than or equal to 9,793. And now for the aluminum, each x requires 15 units of aluminum, each y requires 9 units of aluminum, and each Z requires 14 units of aluminum. And there are 7,430 units of aluminum available. We would have the constraint 15X plus 9Y plus 14Z is less than or equal to 7,430. Now the number of bikes can never be negative, which means X must be greater than or equal to zero, Y must be greater than or equal to zero, and z must be greater than or equal to zero. Notice how all of the requirements for a standard maximization problem have been met, meaning x, y, and z are non-negative, and the constraints are in the form of less than or equal to some non-negative value. So now that we have the objective function and our constraints, the next step is to introduce slack variables and convert the constraints to equations. We'll only do this for the first two inequalities, not these last three, that state x, y, and z are non-negative. So looking at this first inequality, notice how the left side is less than or equal to the right side, but we want the left side to be equal to the right side. So we'd have to add some value to the left side so it'd be equal to the right side. We don't know what that value would be, so we introduce a slack variable, which we'll call S sub one. So we can write the first inequality as an equation. If we take 16x plus 13y plus 18z and add some value plus s sub one, our slack variable, to make it equal to the right side of 9,793. I'm leaving space horizontally here because we'll have other variables 
and we want the like terms to line up vertically. Looking at our second inequality, we're going to do the same thing, but we use a different slack variable, which we'll call s sub two. So if we add some value s sub two to the left side, we can make it equal to the right side. So 15x plus 9y plus 14z plus s sub two would be equal to 7,430. And now it doesn't ask for it, but the third equation comes from setting the objective function equal to zero and keeping p positive, so we'd subtract these variable terms on both sides, which would give us negative 22x minus 38y minus 24z and then plus p equals zero. This is all the information we need in order to set up the initial simplex tableau. Now I know the homework question only asks to enter the simplex matrix, but I think it's helpful to set this up as a tableau and label the rows and columns. So the first step is to label the columns with the variables used. Notice how we're using the variables x, y, z, s sub one, s sub two, p, and then we'll have our constants here on the far right. So this first row comes from the coefficients of the first equation. Notice how the coefficients would be 16, 13, 18, 1. There's no s sub 2 term, so that would be 0 for the coefficient of s sub 2, 0 for the coefficient of p, and then 9,793. So let's go ahead and write that in. We'd have 16, 13, 18, 1, 0, 0, and 9,793. The second row comes from the coefficients of our second equation, which would be 15, 9, 14, 0 for s sub one, one, zero for p, and then our constant. So 15, 9, 14, 0, 1, 0, 7,430. Third row comes from the coefficients of the third equation. So we have negative 22, negative 38, negative 24, zero for s sub one, zero for s sub two, one for p, and then zero. So negative 22, negative 38, negative 24, zero, zero, one, and zero. So as far as our homework goes, we're actually done. These entries here make up the three by seven simplex matrix. Let's also label the rows with the active variables, indicating which variable is associated with each row. So for review, the active variables can be determined by analyzing the columns. The columns that contain only a one and zeros represent the active or basic variables. So notice how S sub one is active or basic so is s sub two and so is p. Whichever row the one is in is a variable associated with that row. So because we have a one here in the first row, we label the first row with s sub one. s sub one is active and associated with row one. Looking at the column s sub two, notice row two has the one, so row two is associated with s sub two. Looking at column P, notice how the one is in row three, so row three is associated with P. So this is the initial simplex tableau, but again in our homework, we're only asked to enter the initial simplex matrix, which would be this matrix here. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.